All right, well, it's 2.02, and we're up to now 109 participants. So I'm John Kist. Uh, most of you know me. and I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm also a faculty member, professor of biology. And it's really great to have you here. Unfortunately, uh, we are not meeting in person. I really do enjoy this beginning of the year event. Our focus will be on positive things, mostly, uh, particularly welcoming our, our new faculty. And typically we have a very nice reception. Um, I have a cup of ice water here with official NASA ice water. So um, I encourage you afterwards to have your favorite beverage. And if it's an adult, adult beverage, that's fine with me. Uh, it's past noon. So um, welcome to this academic year, which is unusual. I was reflecting on it yesterday, how unusual it was. So uh, in the morning when I was having my coffee and all of a sudden we had an earthquake. And uh, so that was something new. I, I wasn't sure it was an earthquake. I thought it was a big truck going by. So this has been quite a year. We've had pandemics, uh, which we usually don't have hurricanes, which we're semi used to, and we could add earthquakes to the plate here. What I'd like to do today is, again, spend time on um, introducing our new tenure track faculty and welcoming all the faculty back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with some general statements like I usually do. Uh, after my general statements, what I will do is I will uh, take questions, but I will only do it via um, the Zoom chat. Now, one thing I didn't think of is, could we use the Zoom chat when we're in this um, share screen mode or do I need to get out of it? Does anyone know? Maybe I'll get out of it because I can't even see my chat screen when I, when I get to that slide. Um, so this is Faust Hall, the oldest building on campus. A couple of us have it in our backgrounds. Uh, and it was uh, founded in 1891. It always gives me some inspiration because Faust Hall has seen, I guess now earthquakes, the Spanish flu, this pandemic, two world wars and the depression, and it's still there. So I'm pretty happy about that. I want to give you some updates, and but by the way, we are going to post this presentation, so you don't have to frantically um, uh, take notes. You'll have all this information there. When I was thinking about information as our staff was talking, I think one of the problems is there's just so much information. And um, we've been sending you information, we've been trying to be transparent, but I have to say, personally, I felt overwhelmed with the amount of information. So what I try to do is just, um, uh, I, I will try to um, just feature a couple of things here. So uh, there is um, a general COVID-19 update section and there's lots of information there, are lots of downloads. And again, I think all of you have gotten this in some form or another. There's also uh, FAQ frequently asked questions. And, um, uh, you know, people could actually uh, submit questions and add to that, but it's, uh, it's about as useful of a site that we have. The next websites focus on kind of, uh, you know, some of the, the key things that we're all doing. So there's a keep teaching website with all sorts of links. There's a keep researching website. So we could keep our important research going. And there's a lot of subtleties of that, depending on your kind of research, ranging from human subjects to library work in the humanities to laboratory work in the natural sciences, etc. It's all on there. 
There's also a keep working site, which I think is useful for everyone, but perhaps it's a little bit more um, staff oriented. And uh, there are different, there are sort of different, at times there are different kinds of considerations and parameters for faculty versus staff. So it's all in there. The last thing on my list is actually the chancellor's website. And as all of you know, on top of all of the crises we've had this summer, we had another crisis uh, that deals with lots of problems in terms of um, racial matters and the problems with racial matters that we've had in this country, the limits of what we're doing, Black Lives Matter. And there's a lot of resources out there one that I found really uh, particularly compelling is um, Chancellor Gilliam, who is an African American. He made a, um, a statement about all of the problems we're having and maybe thinking about solutions. But he, he really talked about it from a very personal level as a, as a black male in the United States and what he's had to tell his kids. And I urge you to look at that. I found it very moving and compelling. The College of Arts and Sciences is, good, is moving forward on a no, number of matters. Um, we have our, uh, our very excellent diversity uh, committee. Uh, we actually, in our monthly newsletter, we had, we featured some perspectives, particularly from our AADS uh, faculty, uh, reflections on some of the things that have been happening. In any case, um, I urge you to have a look at that. All right, here's the part that um, I am not looking forward to. I'm sure you're not either. So the budget update. And uh, I have to say all of this is a moving target, but I'm going to try to give you a summary as to where we're at. Okay, now this is, uh, I said this last year too, not good. And I didn't know what that really meant until this year. I think in general, there are lots of um, things that are happening that are not good. It, it actually really, in my opinion, doesn't have to do with UNCG per se. It has to do with us more broadly as a society. So for, for example, you know, we have a lot of um, economic dislocation, uh, layoffs, you know, really terrible things that have been happening. Uh, as an aside, I might say I feel um, personally privileged that um, while we've had problems, we've been immune from a lot of problems that our society at large has. But nevertheless, I think these problems are going to affect us, although I don't know how. So for instance, we get roughly 42% of our budget from the state of North Carolina. And, you know, the budget of the state, I don't really know what shape it's in, but just think about all the lost jobs, lost state income tax, lost economic activity. So it's going to affect us. And that's uh, the big issue is the effects of the coronavirus situation on our state budget. And I, I don't really have a good answer to that right now because I think it's, it's really a moving target. I mean, there's a lot of needs out there. I'm concerned about K through 12. I'm concerned about unemployment. And of course, I'm concerned about us in universities. L let me say some good news here. Um, when we started this thinking about the fall semester in May, um, we had no idea what's going to happen with our enrollment. I, I would say this is really, uh, of all the things I've gotten, and this is of last Thursday, it, it changes slightly. So it's pretty recent. There might be a, a, a slightly better number. But actually, I think the, uh, there's some good news on our enrollment. And you know we are an enrollment-driven university. And this certainly affects our budget in, in the most major way. Our undergraduate enrollment is down overall 2%. While that's not good, it's never good to be down. Um, there were like these fears of one third drop, whatever, all sorts of scenarios out there. Our graduate enrollment um, is, is up about 7%. I think I saw it was um, 
7.4%, but we have fewer grad students than grad than undergrads. So overall, our UNCG enrollment is down about 0.5%. Uh, one thing I want to add here is, um, you know, the grad enrollment being up was was really a very positive thing. And I think there's many reasons for this. Part of this has been the graduate school has been giving us some modest incentives and funding, particularly in master's programs that are capable of um, growth. And uh, Dana Toron, one of our associate deans, has really worked closely with the departments in the grad school. And I think the efforts have, have paid off here. The thing I always talk about this year is, uh, is a little bit more unknown at this point. So um, it's tenure track positions, kind of the lifeblood of the university. So um, first of all, we requested, there's, um, there are 11 retained positions. And what I mean by this is these are positions that were vacated due to retirements and resignations. And all the positions go back to the office of the provost and I have to request them back. I did this with Provost Dunn and um, I'm doing it now with Provost Coleman. So I, I asked them about these 11 new, the 11 retained positions. The idea would be that we would search on them this year to fill them next year. And I, um, we had a very good preliminary discussion with Provost Coleman, but right now um, really nothing is approved. Usually at this time we do have approval on these things. And it's, it's simply because of all the budget unknowns that I just referred to. But I'm hoping that we get some, perhaps all these positions. We also asked the departments earlier, this is the parentheses, net new tenure track positions not approved. We asked them to submit budget requests for new positions, new funding. And uh, in April, all of those were turned down. Uh, we, we got uh, no net new tenure track positions, nor other resources. But these 11 uh, tenure track positions were still, uh, I guess, on the table and they're, they're open to the possibility. And I will work with the department heads and let people know about that as, as, as soon as possible. This uh, last point here, budget cut exercise, this was um, in my, this is my personal opinion. Um, this was not um, really a great thing that we had to do, but it was mandated by the UNC system. And um, some of this was, uh, people are already very fearful and worried. And I think this made people even more worried. So I think about two weeks ago, uh, I sent out a note to, um, all the faculty and staff in the College of Arts and Sciences. And I, I shared with them the budget cut exercise. It was a very draconian exercise with this worst case scenario. The chancellor had no choice. He was asked to do this. Uh, and the chancellor and the provost asked all the deans to come up with these, I don't know, six or seven scenarios. The worst case was a 50% drop in enrollment which resulted in a 25% budget cut. I didn't even update my slide. Realize now that UNCG actually has uh, overall 0.5% drop in enrollment. Um, I did not have get input from any of the faculty on this. Um, I was basically, depending on how you look at it, I got instructions to do this exercise in, 20, in 48 hours. And then there were a couple of updates. So the final directions were due, oh, about 24 hours before it was submitted. And it was really done by the college staff. It was done by Assistant Dean Anthony Cipollone and I with the Associate Deans and Chief, Chief of Staff. Uh, again, if you look through the many emails you've gotten, I, it's in there and there's a detailed explanation. Um, I, you know, it, it was, um, I think, much more draconian than 
we're seeing right now. Okay, so another thing I wanted to alert you to, uh, I think a big ticket item here, big picture item for the College of Arts and Sciences is um, our requirements, communicating ideas and context. This is the plan for the College of Arts and Sciences um, requirements plan. I had an excellent committee um, that um, made a proposal on this to the faculty at large. It was approved by the faculty in April and we did, we had a remote vote. We had to, oh, by the way, that committee was really excellent. So um, it was chaired by Paul Sylvia in psychology, who was a phenomenal uh, departmental um, citizen to agree to chair the committee. We had input from all parts of the college. We also, um, uh, uh, we had two ex officio people from the college, Nancy Bucknall, who's our chief advisor uh, and, and leads CASA and uh, Associate Dean Chuck Bolton, they did an excellent job. The reason we had to do this was because the university is going ahead um, in terms of um, the general ed modification. Our previous plan was predicated on the university plan. So when it's given the fact that the university has a new plan, uh, the college absolutely had to have a new plan. All these will go, both will go into effect fall 2021. This is a, a summary that was prepared by, uh, by Nancy for us. Just quickly, in addition to Gen Ed, um, all College of Arts and Sciences students will have to complete two courses with college writing attribute. They'll have to complete um, 12 additional credits in three categories six credits in humanities, three credits in data and natural sciences, three credits in um, social and behavioral sciences. They also have to uh, demonstrate intermediate level of proficiency in um, an additional language, the former foreign language requirement. And there are, will be waivers for students to this plan in terms of those who, who transfer in uh, 60 and 90 credit hours. That's just the nutshell view. And there's a, a more detail coming on this. Um, being myself, I need to have some kind of bad joke here. So this is my bad joke. Uh, my summer plans were very upended. I had two really great trips planned, including one to Ireland. And I know all of you were kind of uh, disappointed with your summer travel plans. I look forward to it every year. Nevertheless, um, we had a launch going to Mars and uh, uh, unfortunately my name is on this um, digital this prepared by JPL. It's on the way to Mars now and it will be uh, getting there like February of next year. So um, somehow uh, this launch, by the way, there was a, a chance it would be really delayed by COVID-19 and it really wasn't delayed. So uh, at least virtually uh, I have, I had my extreme travel plans remain. So I hope all of you had some downtime in terms of um, the summer because there was lots of preparation and lots of things going on. Okay, I'm in the theme of good news here. Um, in terms of uh, something I was very pleased about is uh, we've had an increase in uh, external funding and we had a 40% increase, which is really amazing because it's very hard to get funding in general these days. And let me just, you know, whenever we talk about funding in dollars, certainly dollars are part of it, but um, as Dean of the college, uh, I recognize and all the college staff recognize that you know, there's different kinds of funding. Um, typically, natural sciences have an opportunity for larger grants and in the humanities, for instance, the grants tend to be smaller, but those are equally as significant. So 
if someone has a 35,000 NEH grant, we strongly celebrate that just as much as a, as a larger NIH grant to a, a chemist or a biologist. So I, I always uh, want to emphasize that point, but nevertheless, we had a really great increase in funding. Uh, this, I congratulate um, the new faculty we've hired the last few years, and uh, of course our existing faculty are active in grantsmanship. I also want to give a shout out to Associate Dean Amy Adamson. Um, she started a program called Submission 2.0, and what this is, is it's a workshop, a targeted workshop for people who submitted grants and um, uh, were not funded. And um, it's how to improve the grant application. Uh, one of the things that I speak from personal experience is resilience. So you have to keep applying. Um, typically people are rejected several times before they get a funded one. So I thank Amy and all the people who participate in that. This is the second summer. After the first summer, one of our participants resubmitted a grant. She was successfully funded by the NSF. And literally two hours before we came on, Amy sent me an email saying someone from the second cohort or, or someone else was funded. Um, so um, we're, we're really working hard in this important area because uh, I don't anticipate huge increases from the state and other sources. So I wanted to share that good news with you. Let's see here. On the topic of good news, uh, I saw Lynn was on earlier, hopefully Jeff is here, is one of the core values of the College of Arts and Sciences is diversity and inclusiveness. And each year we give out a Dean's Award for diversity and inclusiveness. And this year, the award is being, uh, is going to Jeff Patton and Lynn, Lynn Samets, who are associated with the GES department. And um, they have worked in this STEM program, which also was recently, I heard, refunded, uh, not re funded again. <laughs> um, and um, this program really works to represent, uh, to increase underrepresented groups in STEM fields. And I've actually talked to the groups in the past and it's a really um, wonderful program. And I congratulate uh, Jeff and Lynn for their tireless effort over many years. And there's a lovely picture there with one of the cohorts. Uh, they, they do all sorts of enrichment activities um, might be somewhat limited this year because of the virus situation, but they had field trips to DC and some other kind of cool things. One of the really nice things about this award that I like is um, they, the winners do a presentation and my ulterior motive in this is to really get them uh, to present their ideas on how to increase diversity and promote inclusiveness uh, to a larger group. And I know these programs are very specific, but I think there are some common principles. And um, this is the Zoom presentation scheduled for September 15th. And I'm very excited about it. So I encourage you to come uh, virtually. Uh, Jeff and Lynn will be talking, but um, Lynn recently informed me she's gonna be bringing some of the students. So that's always really cool to hear from them firsthand. So another really good news thing. On the topic of good news, um, we have a, a new monthly um, newsletter, electronic format. It's called uh, Cast Lately. It's edited by um, Elizabeth Carey, and she was our new communication specialist. She started in December and worked with us for a few months until we went into lockdown and we're working virtually. All of you get this newsletter. If you don't, there's one coming out, I think the next day or two. If you don't get it, let us know um, because every uh, faculty, staff member is on it, a lot of our alumni. Elizabeth does a really good job. We get tons of email 
it just features a few stories every month and it has all sorts of links. It's basically my idea of it is there's so many cool things that are happening with our faculty, staff, and students. And I want to share that with each other and the broader community. And Elizabeth has done a really excellent job with this. Again, I, I referred you, we had an earlier one where we, um, we had interviews with uh, AADS faculty, which uh, were, were very interesting and, and compelling. That was part of our newsletter series. All right. Now, um, I'm going to stop. I can just read the questions for you, if you'd rather. Okay, that, that's fine. I, I like to see people, so I got out of the, that mode. So, um, yeah, Dana Turan is going to read. We're going to do some questions and then uh, move on to the introductions. Go ahead, Dana. Well, I don't see any questions yet. So if anyone wants to put questions into the chat, Corey did send out a congratulations um, for the Stamps Award from NSF. Um, Jim Coleman, uh, Provost Coleman, um, sent out a, a kudos for the, the grant successes. I like those kind of questions. I know, this, these, are, these are pretty easy. No questions. Well, it's probably because everyone is really excited about the next next part here. So um, I got to go back into, better not show you the wedding pictures of my son. Um, okay. Can people see my screen now? Yeah. So first of all, um, we're going to be talking about the new lecturers uh, via uh, about the um, we're going to focus on the tenure track people. But, you know, we have a large college and we have a, we always have some new lecturers, um, VAPs and staff people. Um, we're not going to individually introduce them, but I don't want to um, diminish any contributions and future contributions. It's a really fine group of strong people. So uh, welcome to the college and welcome to UNCG. And I really hope to uh, meet you in person one day. So that's sort of a group introduction. I do wanna point out a couple of things in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, it's actually kind of a, a slow year in terms of changes in leadership, but nevertheless, we have some new leaders. Uh, Noel Morissette is, um, leading our, our very interesting AADS, uh, African American African Diaspora Studies program. And again, I mentioned she, uh, um, she helped facilitate this newsletter issue. Uh, Donna Nash is the uh, new head in the anthropology department. She actually started mid-year, um, but uh, this is our formal introduction to her. And uh, Heather Gert is the, the new uh, incoming head of the Department of Philosophy. And in terms of our staff in the college, again, we've had Elizabeth Carey, and I'm sure that uh, all of you uh, will get to know her, or many of you already have. Um, I wanna give, I, don't, I forgot how to do the virtual. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the clap. You can either clap or do the virtual. Uh, there's a virtual clapping business too in Zoom. Forgot where it is. So, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go through the faculty uh, by department. I have a question to go in that that came in. If you want to answer that, or if you want to is say, is it an easy question? Um, I guess that depends. Um, so the question was, when the budget cuts come, and they will, will you use the recent plan, the plan that we had to come up with in 24 hours, as a starting point, or will we start from scratch? No, that's, a, that's an easy question. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, so um, yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, I think, so that was a budget cut exercise. And again, we had to do it very quickly. Um, it was the system told us we had to do this. Any kind of budget cut, and as you know, we did a budget cut, unfortunately, last spring, 2.8% roughly. And any budget cut, we need 
input from the department. So we will use the model of having major serious departmental input to us and, and then um, uh, take it from there. I guess that the template, you know, there's some ideas in there that ultimately may be used, but we're not saying uh, at this point, I don't envision using it that directly. Okay, that was a good question. All right, so um, we're gonna go through the departments and uh, I asked each of the department heads to take about two minutes to talk about the, uh, the, um, the new tenure track faculty that are, are coming in and we're doing this by alphabetical order. So um, hopefully someone will unmute Mitch Croat to introduce our new faculty member in chemistry and biochemistry. All right, so uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Jonathan Chekin. So John uh, is, is a new assistant professor in our department and we are excited uh, to have him start here. So he got his bachelor's in microbiology. As a reminder, he's in chemistry and biochemistry. Uh, that was a concern for us. And uh, during the interview, he showed us that he knows his chemistry and biochemistry as much as any of us. So. Uh, kudos to him. So kind of a, a broader background of, a, of a, an applicant in this case. So bachelor's in microbiology from Penn State. Uh, he had a minor in biochemistry. Uh, he then went to get his PhD at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, what's, I would say, crazy impressive is he got 13 publications as a, uh, as a PhD student. He then did his postdoc at the Scripps uh, Institute of Oceanography, uh, and there he got eight publications, including two that you know have come out so far in, in 2020. So um, just a, a, an incredible background. Uh, and John really strengthens um, what's already a, a big strength in our department, which is natural products research, uh, but in a complementary fashion. So he deals with uh, a different aspect of, of natural products uh, that will really complement uh, the, the rest of people in our department that are in that area. Uh, and kind of an interesting story is uh, John's interview at UNCG uh, should be very memorable to him because while he was interviewing here, uh, he got a call from his wife uh, to find out that they were having a, a baby boy uh, during the interview. So uh, he didn't let us know that until later on, but, uh, and, and now uh, Theodore was born, I, I wanna say like June, June 1st, I believe. Um, so uh, they, they moved across country with, with a, a new baby from, from all the way from California and uh, uh, two, I think two greyhound dogs as well. So it was, it was quite an adventure to get here in addition to the fact that we've got, you know, coronavirus going on kind of thing. So uh, welcome to, to John. John, if you're here, just unmute and say hi and wave so we could see if you match the picture. Are you here? <laughs> yep, yep, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you you look like right. the picture. Yeah, Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Mitch. So uh, moving on, um, I, uh, I, I'd ask uh, Dr. Maura Hain to come forward to introduce our new faculty member in classical studies. Okay, so it's my pleasure to introduce Mikiel von Feldhausen. Um, Mikiel is originally from the Netherlands where he got his BA. Uh, he received his MA in Ancient Greek and Roman Studies from Brandeis University and his PhD in Classics from Brown. He spent last year as an assistant professor at the Intercollegiate Center, at, as an assistant professor at the Intercollegiate Center for Classical Studies in Rome, where by the way, he and his wife also welcomed a son, another male future Spartan. Um, <laughs> Mikhail's research is actually incredibly timely. He makes us very relevant um, and we appreciate that. Um, he works on the religious and intellectual history of the ancient world with particular interest in disaster and divination. His current book project, Divining Disaster, Signs of Catastrophe in Ancient Greek Culture, analyzes the ways in which the ancient Greeks gave meaning to such disastrous events as plagues, famines, shipwrecks, and the lessons it may hold for a hum, uh, hermeneutic disaster management today. So um, thank you, Mikhail, for making us relevant in today's world. Um, he has a forthcoming chapter on the use of abductive reasoning in deciphering oracles and an article 
um, on the reception of Circe's Island as a place of becoming animal in the journal Ramus. Um, and he came to us last year for his interview from Rome. Um, so we're very grateful that he made that um, international flight um, to meet with us and we're really pleased to welcome him and his family. So welcome, Mikhail. Thank yeah, you, thank you so much, Maura and John. Nice to meet you all. Good, nice to see you, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Jing, are, are you there? Could you introduce our computer science faculty member? Yes, um, I'm here. Um, it is my great uh, pleasure and honor to introduce our latest uh, uh, um, faculty into the computer science department and the College of Art and Science, Sciences. Um, Dr. Ju is joining us from the uh, uh, University of Connecticut and he, he is still there due to some paperwork uh, um, processing delays. So he'll be joining us in the spring of 2021 uh, semester. Um, he, before he uh, um, went to the University of Connecticut serving as a postdoc, he was in Hong Kong and he received his PhD in the City University of Hong Kong. Uh, before that, he was in the Chinese Academy of uh, Sciences and he graduated with his bachelor degree in Guangxi University in China. Um, Dr. Ju's research will focus on graph theories, machine learning, and uh, artificial intelligence in the drug discovery, which is really relevant. And I'm sure that uh, Chun Jiang will be looking forward to uh, um, working with other faculty members, researchers in the college uh, um, as well. And, and we, we look forward to having uh, um, Chun Jiang to be with us in the spring semester. Thank you. Thank you, Jin. Thank you, John. I'm here. <laughs> Good. I'm here. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, Scott Romine, are you here? I am here. Good. We are pleased to welcome Derek Palacio, uh, who comes to us from the University of Oregon, where he was a visiting assistant professor. Uh, Derek will be a fiction writer in our MFA program. Uh, he's held previous faculty positions at Ashland University, the Institute of American Indian Arts, Bennington, University of Michigan, and Bucknell University. Um, he did his undergraduate work at Holy Cross and received his MFA in 2012 um, from Ohio State University. Ohio State University, that's how I say it. I don't add the V <laughs> that they insist on. Um, He's the author of two books, uh, How to Shake the Other Man, a novella that was published in 2013, and The Mortifications, uh, a novel that was published in 2016. This is a beautifully written uh, novel, story of a rural Cu Cuban family that's torn apart during the Marielle boat lift of 1980. Um, it was named a New York Times Best Book of 2016. Uh, we're very pleased to have a writer of his talent join our stable of highly talented fiction writers, Holly Jones, Holly Goddard Jones, and Jeanette Alou. So we are, uh, again, very proud of our MFA program um, and delighted that Derek will, will be joining us to strengthen its already um, very high reputation. Thank you, Scott. Derek, hi, are you here? Yes, hi, hello. Nice to see everybody. Uh, and very nice to meet you all. Good, so far the the image and the pictures match, so we're, 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 we're in good shape. And uh, a quick note about Scott Romine, for those of you who see him on Zoom, he's usually in a basement with all these ducks and things, so it's really nice to see him in like a more English department-like office, so thank you, Scott. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Greg O'Brien, I have to say we have three department heads called Greg, and he's, we'll call him Greg number one. I think we could hear from all three of them today. So Greg, number one, are you here? Please be here. <laughs> yeah. Is he unmuted? He's not unmuted. Emily, could you unmute Greg? Ah, thank you. Yeah, I was waiting for someone to unmute me and I couldn't tell you because I was muted. Um, <laughs> Well, it's our pleasure to announce that uh, in this case, Dr. Denisa Jashari will be joining our department as an assistant professor 
uh, starting in January uh, to teach courses in Latin American history. Her research interests include modern Latin America, urban history, political culture, social movements, the Cold War, and oral history and memory. In the past few months of 2020, she completed her dissertation, Cartographies of Conflict, Political Culture and Urban Protest in Chilean Shanty Towns, 1872 to 1994 at the University of Indiana. And this fall, she's a visiting fellow at the Kellogg Institute for International Studies at the University of Notre Dame. So please join me in welcoming Denisa to Greensboro. And is she with us? Okay, well, we'll say hello to her in person. Um, welcome to uh, Denisha. Okay, keep going, Greg. Yep, it's also our pleasure to announce that Dr. Teresa Walsh will be joining our department um, in August now as an assistant professor of modern European history. Dr. Walsh is a specialist in modern Germany with research and teaching interests in social and cultural history, urban history and urbanism, human geography, Holocaust studies, and world and transnational history. Her dissertation was entitled Degenerate Spaces, the Coordination of Space in Nazi Germany. And she earned her PhD in 2018 from UC San Diego. And for the past two years, she has been a postdoctoral fellow at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and, and at Tel Aviv University. And in fact, she is still in Israel um, today. So please welcome Dr. Walsh. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, John. I'm really excited to be here. I look forward to meeting you all in person soon. Uh, one impressive thing about Teresa is she's already following me on Twitter as of yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I know several of our new faculty are doing that. So uh, it's very much appreciated. So we look forward to uh, meeting you in person. Thank you very much. Uh, Lucinda. I'm here. You're there. <laughs> I'm here. Um, the Department of Interior Architecture is excited to welcome Derek Toombs as our new assistant professor. Uh, and Derek might be a familiar face to some as he has worked for us in the past five years in a position shared with the art department as our digital director. We are very happy to have him all to ourselves now. Uh, Derek is, has an undergraduate degree in studio art and an MFA in new media and installation arts and expertise in both digital and physical making, which makes him a perfect match for the work we do in our studios. We are looking forward to his advice and direction as we move forward in developing our technological capabilities, including exploring new media and virtual and augmented reality. Um, Derek has an established career as a successful working artist, um, and it's, <laughs> it's a little hard to talk about an artist without showing their work, um, as you have all been listing other people's accomplishments. So I encourage you to look at his website, but just know he has shown in major art venues in North Carolina, such as the North Carolina Museum of Art and R. Weatherspoon. Um, he also in major cities such as Miami, Portland, and Chicago, and as far as broad as Marrakesh and Morocco. I'm not sure what you're doing there, Derek, but that's been a great trip. Uh, you might have noted he has recently evolved in the mural project in downtown Greensboro, revolving around the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, Derek is well known for his paintings and collaborative murals, but recently his work has also focused on new media in combination with installation, light and sound, and kinetics. Um, he travels to various places around the world to do residencies and work on collaborative projects. He was literally almost on the plane to go to Japan when the COVID hit and he had to cancel that. Um, and so we are very happy to have Derek join us full time, <coughs> excuse me, and bring his expertise and experience to our department. Welcome, Derek. Thank you. Derek, are you there? No, no Doesn't Derek. Seem to be here. Okay, we'll say hello to him when we see him. Thank you, Lucinda. You're welcome. Okay, next slide. 
Okay, uh, Dr. Campo, Roberto Campo is going to introduce our um, faculty member in languages, literatures, and cultures. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very, very pleased to be able to introduce all of you to our new associate professor of German, Dr. Faye Stewart. So Faye uh, earned her PhD in Germanic studies from Indiana University at Bloomington in 2007. There she also pursued a PhD minor in, in film and media studies, which certainly influences what she does in terms of her research. Prior to that, she earned her bachelor's degree at Haverford College in, uh, in comparative literature. So before coming to UNCG, she held a faculty position at Georgia State University for 12 years. Uh, there she received tenure in 2015. Uh, and since uh, 2018, uh, she served as the Associate Department Chair of World Languages and Cultures at that, that institution. In terms of her research and teaching interests, they include many things, um, in particular queer and feminist discourses in literature and film, critical race and ethnic studies, Muslim belonging in German-speaking Europe, Afro-German and Turkish-German studies, refugees and asylum politics, and East German and post-socialist cinema. I'm delighted to report that she received the 2020 Women in German Faculty Research Award for work on her second book entitled The Queer Socialist Cinematic Gaze, Censorship and Sexual Politics in East German Film. Uh, it's also significant that uh, Faye is part of a 10-person team that's been working on authoring an NEH-funded open education resource called Grenzen Deutsch, that is <coughs> Borders, which is an inclusive and accessible uh, beginning German curriculum available online at no cost to learners and teachers committed to teaching to for social change, anti-racist pedagogies and scholarship, and creating collaborations with students and colleagues across the humanities. As it happens, uh, Faye is also fluent in French, so I look forward to many conversations one-on-one -on -one with her in that language, of course, as well as German. She also speaks some Spanish, and she reports that she would also like to learn some Turkish and Greek. John, I'm sorry to say that uh, Hungarian was not on her list yet, but I'll <laughs> to, uh, make sure that we include that. So uh, Good. have her join our German studies program here in LLC uh, to join LLC's wonderful team of highly dedicated faculty and staff. And on behalf of our department and the college, I will Simply say, willkommen an Bord. Merci. Hey, are you here? Yes, I am. Merci, Roberto. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm very excited to join the Spartan family. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Nice to see you. Okay, uh, Sat, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome our new hire. Uh, Dr. Thomas Mayhem. Thomas did his uh, undergraduate work and master's work in South Africa, and then he came to UT in Oxford, finishing with a PhD in 2019 in computational topology. And that's a topic uh, in pure mathematics. And after finishing his PhD, he went to Tufts uh, as a postdoc for one year in the gerrymandering group there. And starting this July, he became a research assistant professor there, uh, like several other uh, new hires. Uh, also will be joining us uh, in January. He is busy finishing a ongoing project. I'll tell you this, that uh, typically for math, all math doesn't uh, go hand in hand with uh, political science, but uh, Thomas is an exception. I request the political science department to invite him for a colloquium talk even though his work is in pure math, but he, his work has applications in uh, work, uh, electoral, electoral reforms and redistricting. So very beautiful work uh, that he does. In a very short uh, career actually so far, he has already published uh, 12 papers, very strong papers. He also has two book chapters in a forthcoming uh, Springer uh, book volume. So I think we are very pleased to have found him we almost lost him in the sense that uh, when we were getting ready to bring him, uh, there was a pandemic, uh, uh, you know, related freeze, and we didn't know like, what was going to happen. But fortunately, things went back on track, and uh, we are 
very, very pleased to have him. So welcome, Thomas. Thank you. Thomas, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I've unfortunately had to shave a bit so I can wear a mask, so I don't quite match my photo. But You don't match the photo. Are you sure that's Thomas? That? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, nice to see you, and I look to forward to meeting you in person. Thank you. Same. Okay, now we have Greg number two. Dr. Greg McAvoy is going to introduce our new faculty member in political science, who also is following me on Twitter, I believe. So another good sign. Um, hi, first of all, I'd like to object to being not Greg number one. Uh, I think we need some more rigorous uh, criteria for who gets to be number one, but we'll take that up later. Um, so let me uh, introduce to you, uh, Drew Engelhart. Um, he received his PhD from Vanderbilt University and last year was a postdoc research associate at Brown in the Tubman Center for American Politics and Policy and was affiliated with the Policy Lab there. Um, his work looks at the sort of changing um, attitudes among Americans with regard to um, individual identity. Um, and intergroup um, attitudes. Um, and he uses some kind of innovative methods uh, to look at those questions. Uh, one paper he did uh, does a text analysis that compares the um, broadcast of the Rachel Maddow show, show to the O'Reilly factor. Uh, and then another study he looked at, he, he did an experiment in looking at the, what, um, football fans' allegiances and how that uh, and what that can teach us about uh, partisanship. Um, but his, um, I guess, most salient um, and uh, relevant uh, work right now uh, has to do with racial attitudes uh, and how they've uh, changed uh, over time, particularly uh, um, attitudes about um, black lives. Um, and so his uh, work on racial attitudes um, has garnered um, a lot of uh, important press, uh, including um, mentions in The Atlantic, The Guardian, The New York Times, NPR, The National Review, and so on. Uh, and this work has been uh, published in some of the top journals uh, in political science as well. Um, for us, he will be uh, teaching um, courses on uh, political psychology, public opinion, uh, and quantitative methods. Um, and lastly, um, he told me, I think I'm paraphrasing a bit, but the most important lessons uh, from, his, from his life as a grad student are reflected in his hobbies, which include um, craft beer, cycling, and rock climbing. Um, so please join me in welcoming uh, Drew to UNCG. Drew, are you with us? Yeah, uh, thanks so much for the introduction, Greg. Uh, thanks for having uh, running this, uh, John, and great to meet everybody and excited to be here and meet everybody in person once we can uh, do that. Great. Greg, there's advantages to being Greg number two. Usually when there's a problem, we blame Greg number one. We, and we go down the list. So. I'll take that under advisement as I uh, lodge my protest. And there is a great number three shortly. <laughs> okay, uh, a non-Greg, uh, Stuart, are you with us? I am. Uh, the Department of Psychology is pleased to welcome Dr. Margaret Olivieri. Megan, as she prefers to be called, earned her PhD from Penn State University in 2019 and is currently completing her postdoctoral fellowship in the Department of Psychiatry at LSU Health Sciences Center. She'll be joining us in the spring semester. Megan's research explores the intersection between emotion development and language development in early childhood. She studies parent-toddler communication processes, especially in the context of socioeconomic or psychosocial risk. For example, in a recently published study, Megan investigated how parents respond to their toddler's communication 
It turns out that parents will respond verbally when toddlers vocalize more often than when toddlers display negative emotions. And interestingly, when parents do respond verbally to negative emotions, toddlers tend to shift to vocalizing to continue the interaction. Thus, parents are naturally using verbalization as a way to continue interactions, and toddlers are picking up on this and adjusting their behavior accordingly. The research is cutting edge. Using language analysis software that records and quantifies the dialogue between parents and toddlers, a tool that will not only be used for research purposes, but also to make sense of faculty meetings. This is a homecoming in a sense for Megan. Although she grew up in the Northeast, her grandparents grew up in Men in Greensboro. And although she hasn't confirmed this yet, we think that it is likely they went on dates at Yum Yum and Stamies. So a kinship with the area runs deep in her veins and she looks forward to starting a career and raising her family in a friendly, familiar place. We are delighted to have her join us and look forward to her start in January. Thanks everybody. I'm really excited to, to get there and to meet you all in person, hopefully not too long from now. Good. Well, welcome, Megan. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to Greg number three. Greg I, just want, I just want to say um, the ranking of the of Greg's will not make discord within <laughs> the Greg's. <laughs> we will stand strong. I also want to say that the um, the alphabetical listing of the uh, candidates, if we listed by pure awesomeness, Dana would be at the top. I just want <laughs> to let you know. But anyways, it, it's my pleasure to introduce the Religious Studies Department's new assistant professor in religions of the Americas, Dr. Dana Logan. Dr. Logan is interested in ritual, shakers in the 19th century revivalism, as well as religion and consum uh, consumerism. Uh, in 2007, Dr. Logan graduated from Reed College in Portland, Oregon with a BA in American Studies and Religious Studies. He then went on to achieve in 20, 2009 an MTS in the History of Christianity from the Harvard Divinity School. And then in two, uh, 2015, Dr. Logan graduated from Indiana University Bloomington with a PhD in Religious Studies and a minor in American Studies. Her dissertation was titled Uncivil, Religi uh, Uncivil Rituals, Civil Religion and Democracy in New York City, 1780 to 1850. Um, Dr. Logan comes to us after working as a visiting assistant professor in the Department of Religious Studies of Connecticut College. And before that, she was a postdoc at the John C. Danith Center on Religion and Politics at the Washington University. Um, Dana comes to us highly, Ollie, with a lot of work under her belt. She's already written on a wide variety of subjects, everything from uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop and the Lean Closet um, to the antebellum American Protestantism and the Black Sailor and Benevolence in early 19th century New York. Her monograph, uh, Awaken Ritual, Sensations of Governance in Protestant Civil Society is under review at the University of Chicago Press. And if I understand this correctly, she has not only written about Shaker fan fiction, but also writes Shaker's fan fiction. So we look forward to her coming and shaking up things in the department and the college and the university. So without further ado, let's put our hands together, or at least click the correct icon, and let's welcome Dana to UNCG. Thank you, Greg. I'm thrilled to be here and I'm really looking forward to meeting you all in person. Great. Well, welcome, Dana. And Greg, thank you for being understanding about the Greg situation. It's, it's greatly appreciated. All right. So last but not least, so this we're going out of um, order here. Um, we have a new full professor in the bio department and I'm pulling ranks on our fine department chair uh, head Malcolm. Uh, so um, Jim Coleman is a new tenured full professor in the bio department. He is a plant physiological ecologist. So I have to say, first of all, I hope people aren't too concerned that there are too many botanical types in administration. Um, there are probably worse fates than that. So we'll have to survive somehow. Uh, Jim is um, he's really a, a fine scholar and you know one of my um, one of the points I like to make for those of you who know me well is I think administrators should be uh, role models for faculty and Jim certainly fits the bill 
He's a, a, an excellent scholar in his field. His PhD is from Yale University. His undergraduate is from the University of Maine. And he did um, postdoctoral research both at Stanford and Harvard University. Uh, he's published 75 papers, including two in the premier journal Nature, and he's uh, very well cited. He comes to us uh, most recently from the University of Arkansas. Uh, previous to that, he was at Northern Arizona University. He was also Dean of Arts and Sciences, although they call it something else, College of Humanities and Sciences at uh, VCU. And he served as a program officer at the National Science Foundation in Ecological and Evolutionary Physiology. Uh, I've talked to him several times about how great the college is, how we're a fine group of teacher scholars, and I know he's excited to be meeting many of you in, in person. If you uh, add up his grant record, which includes both um, biological research and lately focusing on infrastructure types of grants to promote higher education, it's $64 million. I'd like to welcome Jim Coleman. I have no idea whether he's on because he was on a chancellor's meeting. Yes. Jim, are you on? I am here. Jim, we will yield to you. You will have a full two minutes to say something to us. <laughs> um, just, I'm here as a faculty member today, so I want to whine about the dean. Oh, <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. To, I've been learning about many of you. It's great to see so many faces. Um, really pleased to be um, here at UNCG. And I really thank Ann Wallace for her comment because you can't ever have too many botanists. That's true. So if you look at <laughs> So anyway, thanks, John. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. And, and hopefully we'll be uh, working a lot together with you and all your faculty. And Jim, you, you pass because your picture matches up to your real look, so. <laughs> so. I don't have my mask there, if that's my. That's yeah. my. Well, we, we look forward to seeing uh, more of Dr. Coleman in the college and, and with, within the, uh, the biology department. Thanks, thanks for coming today, Jim. Thank you, John. Oh, lunch with the dean. Before I get to that, so first of all, I'm always really excited at this time of year because uh, we've heard about the diverse, fascinating research programs that our new tenure track faculty are bringing. And I am super thrilled about that. I really enjoy hearing about the different kinds of research that people do. Uh, I know that people are already quite accomplished. Um, as Dean, one of the things I really enjoy is uh, working with the department heads in searches, and I'm involved with all the searches, all the tenure track searches. So I've read your CV resumes, and I know that you're really gonna be um, helping us to transform UNCG to make a strong college and university better. So I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to have you. Um, you do get a free lunch with the dean. I have to say, uh, I did it last year and I, I lucked out. I, I finished the free uh, the lunches. Um, it's usually groups of uh, four or five faculty. And I, I finished the end of February before the world changed. And uh, those lunches are just an opportunity for you to get to know me and uh, for me to get to know you. I also kind of asked, what do you think the senior faculty are doing? But um, we don't focus on that too much. But anyway, it's, it's a fun event. Um, some people say we have to have it virtually. I'm optimistic personally about having some kind of um, vaccine so we can get the world back to normal. So I want to postpone those lunches uh, as, as late as possible so we could safely do it. So. Uh, it, it'll be really a lot of fun. Ah, why can't I move here? So this is my last slide. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming today. Um, again, welcome to all of our faculty who are coming back, our new non-tenure track faculty, our staff, and our, our tenure track faculty. I want to echo some of the things both uh, our provost and chancellor have said is um, 
we're kind of in this unprecedented time. Um, I really appreciate all of your efforts. I know this, the spring was weird, the summer was weird. You had to do lots of work, extra work to, to get ready. I think UNCG is a very strong place. and I think the college is a real leader. Um, we are really a fine group of teacher scholars. I don't know what the future holds. Only the provost and the chancellor have the crystal balls, uh, but, but, but I don't. Um, so um, I look forward to working with you. I think um, we also, I urge you to be patient, patient with me, patient with your colleagues, patient with each other. Um, and uh, I, I'm excited about the start of the new year. Again, I have my, I really only have water in this, ah, you can't see it, my, my cup here, which is coming in and out. There's a space shuttle on it. Uh, have some kind of cold drink and adult beverage to, to celebrate today. And um, uh, here's the, here's welcome in all the direction, in all these languages. And uh, as most people know, uh, my background is Hungarian. So whoever in the next hour, if anyone figures out what the Hungarian word is up there for welcome, uh, they could email me and get a special, I already owe Dana Tura on a Starbucks coffee, but um, I'll deliver a Starbucks to your house or something if you figure out what the Hungarian greeting is. So anyway, thank you to everyone and um, welcome to the new year. And uh, we look forward to, to working with all of you. Thanks a lot. Bye guys.